Hey, we're going to be recapping the first week of NCAA Wrestling, talking about the box scores for all the team matches, uh, some of the major upsets, and then our takeaways from this whole week. So yeah, let's go right into the video. First off, starting off with the scores, a uh, few duels, maybe like, I would say like 10, 15 to happen over the week. We had Buffalo versus Ohio, Arizona State versus Little Rock, uh, Arizona just dominated Little Rock. Uh, Virginia Tech ended up taking out Campbell 28-6. Chattanooga completely dominated Emmanuel, Missouri, looking really strong in South Dakota State. North Dakota State had a close win over Oregon State. Um, NC State also looked pretty strong. Um, Iowa State had a good win over Wartburg. Um, and then uh, Missouri also had, I think Missouri had three duels uh, that went on during this week. And then at the end of the week, Pittsburgh ended up beating Kerry Colat from Navy, uh, his team. Uh, it was pretty close, 22-14. Something like that. But yeah, um, not the most entertaining week, I'd like to say. Uh, weren't a bunch of high wrestlers that competed or high ranked schools because uh, Big Ten schools, they only compete, I think they only start competing in the second week, and some Big 12 schools competed while some did not. Um, so it wasn't the most entertaining week, but at least we got some wrestling. Uh, really, the only notable schools that competed were Missouri, looked really strong. Uh, NC State, who also looked pretty strong, and then Arizona State, um, and yeah, those were really the strong schools that competed in, and of course, Iowa State. Now, moving on to the upsets, uh, which we'll have here here somewhere, but 125, two upsets, uh, Daniel Vega got upset in both of those. Uh, 133, really weird. Um, Matt Schmidt ended up upsetting 11th ranked guy Devin Turner, um, and then Zach Price ended up upsetting Matt Schmidt. And then he also upset a Dan Devin Turner, and then Devin Turner again got upset um, by Kellen March. So all the guys kind of upset at each other. It was kind of weird. Um, Zach Price looked sharp out there. Um, so yeah, that was for 133, 141. Uh, Cody Tribus won uh, 149. Uh, Bryce Endon won. And then 157, this one was kind of interesting. Uh, the 22 ranked guy, Hunter Willis. Um, barely beat the 17-ranked guy, Kay DeVos. Um, and then true freshman, Keegan O'Toole, comes out two minutes, I think in the second period, um, ended up pinning Kay DeVos, a 17-ranked guy. Um, so it, it was pretty interesting. And Missouri has a pretty deep weight class there. They got one other guy, I think it's 13th-ranked guy there. Uh, so it should be interesting to see if they're going to wrestle Keegan O'Toole or the other guy from Missouri. But yeah, those were the major upsets. Um, in this uh, week. Now, our takeaways. Well, first of all, we got three, but the first one is COVID is going to be a factor in this season. Um, we all knew it would happen, but I just didn't think it was going to happen this early. First duel, what, what was supposed to be the year, I think it was um, UNC was supposed to go against Campbell or something like that on January 1st. Ended up getting postponed due to COVID. Uh, so yeah, that kind of sucked, but uh, this is probably going to happen more in the, as long as the wrestling season keeps on going on. Uh, so be prepared for that. Now, secondly, um, this NCAA wrestling season is not going to be conventional at all. Started off with, I think, three schools um, that wrestled against non-D1 teams. Iowa State, Central Michigan, and Chattanooga. Um, all of them dominated the teams they were against. Um, but it's not unheard of for this to happen, but it is kind of um, not typical or not usual for the NCAA wrestling season. And then moreover, this year, it's supposed to have no tournaments whatsoever. So we saw a lot of like coaches put in kind of like pool play, round robin type um, duel meets, like outside of the duels, either after or before the duel happened, um, kind of like a mini tournament, but not a tournament um, to get the wrestlers more matches. Of course, no medals or anything, really just for experience. Um, in the 11 duels that happened this week, we saw 110 matches. Um, and then in these extra matches, Ended up seeing 92 of those to get some wrestlers more experience. Wrestle some guys who are either not starting or are like first years, true freshmen. So that was pretty interesting to see how that is going to maybe evolve the schedule with no tournaments uh, going into this season. And then our third and final takeaway is that Missouri is pretty deep. Um, it's pretty deep school. They've got, I think, three weights where they have two good guys. Uh, but most notably 157, they got Keegan O'Toole and 13th ranked guy, uh, Jared Jacquees, um Started O'Toole, I think, in a few matches, and they started uh, Jack Cuisson and some other ones. He ended up taking some decisions over the 15th and 19th guy, while O'Toole 
uh, ended up pinning the 17th ranked guy. So it should be pretty interesting to see uh, what the coach of Missouri is going to decide about who to wrestle. Uh, there's no like year of eligibility that's going to be wasted. So in my opinion, I think you should just let the better wrestler wrestle. Um, and from what I saw this week, I think Keegan O'Toole is going to be wrestling for Missouri at 157. Uh, but it really is up to the coach and how Keegan really performs in that practice room and how he performs in the duel. But yeah, that's our recap of the first week of NCAA wrestling. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, comment down below, and sub for more wrestling content like this. Peace.